Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Ralph Giordano from Harbor Christian Center in Wilmington, and I'm honored to be with you for a few minutes today. Thinking about recent events here in our country, people could be scared. They could be uncertain about the future. Look, today, school has been suspended. We can't just go outside and hang out with our friends, go to the mall or to the movies. Life as we know it has been changed. But I believe at this time, it's a wake-up call for all of us to ask ourselves, what's really important in life? Of course, family, good friends. But most important, our relationship with God. Advice I give to students often is this. Plan to live your life like you were going to live to be a 100. But be ready to go if today was your last day on planet Earth. I want you to know that God is not taken by surprise by any situation that you're dealing with today. God is in control. And yes, this too will pass. But to know God's love is to know peace. Without God, one will have no real peace. So I want to ask you today. What is the greatest problem facing your life? What is the greatest problem facing the lives of our friends and fellow students on campus? Is it anxiety or a feeling of depression? Is it hurt over a broken relationship? Or is it looking for a purpose and needing direction in your life? A teacher in his science class asked his students this question. How many of you do not believe you came from a single-celled organism? One young man in the class who happened to be a Christian looked to the left and to the right and was surprised that no one said anything. All he did was lift his hand up in the classroom and you think he shot the teacher with a gun. The teacher said, oh! Some of us make stupid decisions in the name of our religion. He ran to the whiteboard and wrote the word zygote, Z-Y-G-O-T. When he got to the last letter in the word, he was so frustrated, the pen in his hand flipped out and landed halfway across the room. Afterwards, the young man went to the teacher and said, Sir, you know what I meant in class. I know, but I just wanted to have a little fun with you. But how can you tell me that we're made in the image of God? Look at all the disgusting people in the world, the prejudice, the violence, the murder. And the young man said, that's easy. We are made in the image of God, but the image of God has been damaged by the power of sin. I can't tell you that that young man led the teacher to the Lord Jesus as his savior, but he was able to be a witness for the Lord. I want to ask you, what is the greatest problem facing your life? The past mistakes or wrong choices, secret pain in your own life play over and over in your mind? Or do you ask yourself, why do bad things happen to people? Or maybe, why am I here? What is my purpose in life? And what happens when you die? Or even more practical, do you know anyone or maybe you yourself that are looking for a fresh start in life? Jesus is our answer. See, really, no matter what example you give, the root problem is a sin problem. What is sin? Sin, simply said, is disobeying God. Or you could say it this way, sin is the rejection of God's rightful authority over our lives. It's that attitude, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want. You know, some people could say, Mankind is basically good, but really the Bible says that the heart of mankind is desperately wicked. Who could know it? God knows everything about you and I. He loves us, will never tell anybody, and his love for us will never change. Sin is like a dartboard on the wall in your room and you throw the dart to hit the target. But not only did you miss the dartboard, the bullseye, but you missed the dartboard completely. That's what sin is. It's missing God's plan for our lives. But Jesus came to take care of our sin problem and for us to have restored relationship with himself. When Jesus died on the cross, love was demonstrated. You know, it's been said that the value placed on anything 
is determined by what someone's willing to pay for it. Have you ever wanted to buy something and it was a lot of money, but to you it was worth it and you worked hard, you saved your money because you wanted to buy that item? Well, God looked past our rebellion, past our disobedience and saw something of great value, you and I. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, love was demonstrated. But also when Jesus died on the cross, judgment was satisfied. Say, Ralph, what are you talking about? See, because there's a price to pay for sin. Sin is like a cancer in our lives that will destroy us. And sin will take you further than you want to go and it will cost you and I more than we want to pay. But heaven, can I say it this way? Heaven laid it all on the field. Heaven bankrupt itself by giving Jesus as the sin offering for you and I. When Jesus hung on the cross, he had you and I on his mind. And sin, the punishment of sin was taken away. So we could have not only forgiveness, but we could have relationship with our heavenly father. You know, how can I really show love to a girlfriend? If I don't know the source of love, and that's God's love. And I'm here to tell you today that God loves you. Jesus is his son, and he is in the life-changing business today. It doesn't matter what the issue is in our life or what the situation we're dealing with. Jesus is the answer. Can I ask you a question? A lot of people tell me, Ralph, why should I believe what you're telling me? about your religion, but I tell people, never religion changed them, but a person, his name is Jesus. What is eternal life? Number two, I wanna ask you, where is eternal life? Three, how do you get eternal life? You know, the Bible says that Christianity is not religion, but relationship with God through a person, his name is Jesus. This is eternal life, John seventeen three, that we may know you, the only true God, and Jesus, his son. Then you look and ask yourself, where is eternal life? Eternal life is in a person. His name is Jesus, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. And number three, very important, how do we get eternal life? The Bible says, John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as received him, to them, the Father gave the right to become a son of the living God. Think about it. The God of all creation came down in the form of a person, a human being, and gave his life on the cross so that we could have freedom, that we can have forgiveness, so that we can have relationship with our heavenly Father. I think of a young man named Kurt who came to our youth service one evening, and he had a lot of questions about God. It was getting late. Everyone had to go back to school. We were going to pray together and we were going to talk more tomorrow. As we were praying together, my friend and I, Kurt and his friend, he was watching us and he noticed that my friend had tears streaming down his face as he was praying. And he stopped us and said, what you have is real. I would do anything for what you have. Kurt, what we were talking about is Jesus and what Jesus did for my friend here, he'll do for you. And he stopped and he looked at his friend and he said, could I pray the way I am? And his friend thought for a moment. He said, yeah, if you mean it, yeah, I guess you can. So we prayed a very simple prayer. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and that the Father raised his son, Jesus, from the dead, you'll be saved. Kurt prayed that prayer that evening. It was not just saying words, but he meant it from his heart. And after he got done praying, he started crying. And he said, wow, no drug ever did this for me. I feel so much love in my heart. I hope this feeling never goes away. So he said, Kurt, what you feel in your heart is the love of Jesus. But remember, we don't live our Christian life by our feelings, because feelings come and go. But we live our Christian life by what we know, that God loves you, Kirk. He changed your heart, and you're a new person in Christ right now. 
I said, Kirk, I have a question for you. What did you mean when you asked your friend, can you pray the way you are? What do you mean the way you are? What did you mean by that? He said, oh, I was smoking weed before I came to youth service tonight. And I didn't know if God could hear me while I was high. But God saw past his issue, past the words that he spoke, and he saw his heart. And today, I want to ask you, what are you going to do with Jesus? Would you like to open your heart just like Kirk did? Turn from your sin to Jesus and allow him to change your life. Let me pray for you. Say this after me. You say, but Pastor Ralph, how could these few words really make a difference? Because God, like I said, will look past your words and see your heart. And if you mean it and you believe with all your heart, believe is simply to trust completely, to rely upon. What are we relying upon? When Jesus died on the cross, he died with you and I on his mind to take the punishment for our sins and for us to know his love and have relationship with him. Let's pray. Say this after me. Say, Jesus, I give you my heart. I believe you died on the cross for me. I, of my own free will, choose to turn from my sin to you. Set me free from the power of sin. Forgive me of all my sins. I give you my heart and my life. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to challenge you. If you prayed that prayer, remember, God's word is true. Go to a good Bible-believing church. If you don't have a Bible, we'll give you one. Read the word. Keep coming to FCA. I want to let you know something, too. The next day, I went to see Kirk to bring him a Bible after school and just to see how he's doing. I noticed that when I got to his house, he was carrying boxes out of the house. I said, wait a minute, Kirk. I thought you told me you lived here. Oh no, this is my girlfriend's house. I'm moving out. I, what? Who told you to move out of your girlfriend's house? No one, Ralph. I just felt in my heart that it wasn't pleasing or honoring to God. Jesus is in the life-changing business. When he changes your heart on the inside, then your life begins to line up with his plan and purpose for your life. Thank you for listening. God bless you.